Okay. And uh, right now I shared my PowerPoint so you can see what it is all about. Uh, so Thank the, you. Uh, so, uh, okay, so today's topic is towards the linguistic diversity and uh, inclusion in solid social and solidarity economy. Uh, I don't know if you've been to different social solidarity economy uh, forums in the, uh, in the international and uh, especially intercontinental uh, context, but usually uh, in the, uh, at the intercontinental conferences, uh, people use three official languages, uh, i.e. English, French, and Spanish. And on, on one hand, uh, it's true that these three languages are spoken in, diff in many, many countries. But on the other hand, of course, as we, uh, we are from Asia, we know that uh, uh, these three languages not uh, always cover the whole continent. So uh, this is the presentation I, uh, I made for that uh, refresh, uh, you know, solidarity economy community. Because, and, uh, so uh, I don't think this kind of experiment is necessary because we uh, were in different solidarity economy conferences or international conferences and, and sometimes you see you know, this kind of PowerPoint that you don't understand. Well, in this case, uh, 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 Moon and uh, Sumira, of course, I can understand, but uh, uh, most agents don't understand if I speak in Japanese. And what's important is that if a presentation is given in a language you don't understand, you feel bewildered because uh, you don't understand what people are uh, telling. But also, uh, by the very fact, for instance, uh, uh, if I speak uh, in Spanish, uh, you feel as if I didn't know, I didn't understand English or Japanese. So you feel as kind of, you know, psychology, psychological barrier with me. That means uh, you don't think, you feel like I don't understand you if you uh, try to speak to me in Japanese or English. Although, I, uh, in fact, I do understand such language. But uh, especially, I'd like to uh, underscore that, you know, uh, you feel rejected. So you uh, you see that in the U.S., uh, some people say, "Welcome to America." Now speak English. And uh, the, the right uh, uh, picture on the right is, you know, uh, especially for Catalans and the Basques. They, you know, they uh, hate Franco because uh, you know, the dictator Franco, who, who ruled Spain between 1939 to 1975, and under his rule. Uh, only Spanish was allowed to uh, 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 the official uh, official language. So Catalan and Basque were uh, forbidden languages, and the, uh, those who spoke uh, such language at pu in public were uh, punished at that time. So uh, you know. And uh, I'd like to start begin with the fact that the Jesuit, uh, uh, when they arrived to a different part of the world, uh, what they first, the first thing they did was to translate the Bible into different languages. So this uh, picture is an example of the um, dictionary called a uh, vocabulary of Japan's language. So Jesuit mm, mm, made the, uh, first of all, they made this, Japanese Portuguese dictionary and then translated the Bible from uh, Portuguese or Latin or Greek to Japanese so they could chance, you know, uh, present the, you know, uh, Christian, the idea of Christianity to the Japanese. They did the same in, in Latin, what is nowadays Latin America to evangelize, let's say, uh, Indian indigenous Latin Americans. Uh, of course, you no know, solidarity economy is not about Christianity, but uh, we we can learn from what their strategy. That if we want to uh, communicate with locals about something abstract like social and solidarity economy, the first thing you have to do is translate to localize or translate inf uh, information in the language people can really understand. And uh, 
Asians, I'm sorry, uh, Latin Americans or Europeans tend to think that Asians are at least uh, 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 Asians with uh, university degree are fluent in English, but this is far from reality. Uh, so this map shows the level of English pr uh, proficiency by country. And so you see that uh, uh, country like Korea or China uh, uh, are in you know, light green, which is in moderate. Some people are fluent in English, but not everybody. And in Latin America, uh, and uh, so Korea has more or less the same, same level as like Spain, France, and uh, Italy. And usually they, they think in, their English is terrible. So they uh, demand their right to speak French or Italian or Spanish. And you see Latin America, uh, in most Latin American countries, uh, you see uh, colors like uh, yellow, which means low, or red, which means very low. So Latin Americans are very, very poor in speaking uh, in English. And uh, when we go back to Asia, you see countries like Vietnam, Japan, and Indonesia are in yellow. And uh, uh, other countries like Thailand, uh, Cambodia, and uh, Burma, uh, sorry, Myanmar, uh, are in red. So for me, it's uh, unfair that while Latin Americans demand uh, for their right to you know, use Spanish at international conferences, Asians uh, with more uh, with uh, more or well, similar level command of English language can't uh, demand their right to use uh, their own language, such as Korean, Indonesian, Thai, Khmer, Vietnamese, Japanese, or Chinese. And let's see which countries are covered by a RIPES trilingual policy. That means uh, RIPES is the international net intercontinental network of, uh, for the promotion of social and solidarity economy. And uh, they usually use English, French, and Spanish for international conferences. So you see red countries. Uh, so let's say that you are fluent in English, French, and Spanish. And you want to go to uh, to give you want to go to a university to give a presentation about your country. So when you go to a red country, you can expect uh, people, students, or professors to understand your presentation in English, French, or Spanish. It doesn't mean that not necessarily mean that everybody is fluent in English. So for instance. In India or the Philippines, some people don't speak English as fluently as their native language, which is like Hindi, uh, Tagalog, and so on. But at least at the university or at the government, you can speak uh, English. In uh, West Africa, the same is true, but instead of uh, English, such people are, tend to be fluent in French. And uh, so, you know, uh, at least uh, red countries are covered by this policy. Uh, there are some pink countries, especially in Europe, where people tend to be fluent in English, but their uh, English isn't our official language. So when you go to countries like Germany or Sweden or Greece, people tend to understand your English, but uh, at, uh, for uh, Usually they live their own life in Ger speaking uh, German, Swedish, or Greek. So we still need to understand the local language if we really want to pick up uh, information from such countries. And another in important category is blue, which means another Romance language is official. So for instance, in Brazil, Portugal and Angola, uh, Portuguese is spoken. So, and Portuguese is very, very similar to Spanish. So practically, those who speak Portuguese can understand uh, our uh, written and oral communication in Spanish. And we can also understand uh, their presentation in Portuguese. The same is true with Italy and Romania, where another Romance language is spoken. But we see a lot of uh, also great countries, especially in Asia, where no English, neither English nor French nor Spanish is spoken. So these countries are systematically excluded from repress uh, uh, from the trilingual uh, policies. So you see. Uh, Filipinos, Malaysians, uh, and uh, uh, those from the Indian subcontinent are uh, 
fought in it because they speak English and therefore they uh, it, it included included to some degree but uh, a lot of Asians uh, uh, and also from uh, uh, from uh, Ra uh, Russia and so on are uh, excluded and uh, but of course uh, uh, we have to admit that we can't provide information in every language because there are simply because there are too many languages so this is a typical sign signboard uh, that you could uh, find in brussels uh, which is a uh, no, officially a bilingual uh, city that means uh, belgium has uh, two uh, sorry uh, to be a uh, uh, precise that Belgium has three official languages, uh, French, uh, Dutch, and German. And at Brussels, uh, it's French and uh, uh, French and Dutch. So uh, uh, every sign is written in French and uh, Dutch, uh, but uh, usually the Dutch speakers tend to be fluent in English or French. So on, from the uh, purely, uh, you know, uh, practical viewpoint, uh, using that wouldn't be too important, but you, uh, there's a kind of identity issue, political issue, and so on there in Belgium. So having signs in English, sorry, uh, Dutch is uh, essential there in the Netherlands, sorry, uh, Belgium. But of course, uh, uh, when we work at international level, we can communicate uh, to them in English or French and they understand uh, perfectly. So unless we have a, a, a meeting there in Brussels or maybe in Antwerp, uh, we don't have to provide uh, Dutch translation. And also I'd like to underscore the importance of passive and active use of language. The passive uh, use of language means that uh, people can read uh, uh, or news, newspapers or people can uh, understand uh, oral presentation while the active use uh, refers to people's ability to write or make presentation speak in the language and uh, i'd like to give an example in catalonia spain uh, Catalan, uh, catalans are uh, very nationalistic and they uh, uh, they talk a lot about the, they tend to uh, defend the use of catalan but uh, for, uh, especially when Latin Americans go to Catalonia for, uh, to attend a, a conference, uh, so when they stay there for a couple of days, no Catalan uh, would demand them to speak Catalan because all the similar uh, Catalan and Spanish are, are quite similar, like maybe, uh, well, there are less di difference between Spanish and Catalan than, for instance, between uh, standard uh, Mandarin and Cantonese. But uh, even so, Catalan is a bit, uh, uh, a bit different uh, than Spanish. Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, Latin Americans go to uh, Barcelona for a short stay, and they can usually uh, get along perfectly speaking only Spanish. So. Uh, so at least every Catalan understands Spanish, uh, written Spanish, and also sp uh, spoken Spanish. So in this sense, as for the passive use, uh, using Catalan isn't necessary. But on the other hand, when they express, they write or they speak, uh, they really demand their right to speak, use Catalan, or rather for political than for linguistic uh, you know, uh, reasons. And so they uh, stick to the use of uh, Catalan unless the message is directed specific, specifically for uh, out of the Catalan speaking area. So what I mean is that uh, more languages are needed for active use uh, than for passive use. And maybe uh, for in this case, we could mention the case of some Asian countries where people learn English at school so and they watch uh, TV news in English they news uh, read newspapers in English so they can they understand English but this doesn't necessarily mean that they are fluent in speaking or writing uh, they are uh, they're good at writing or speaking in English so in this sense perhaps to help them express themselves better when uh, maybe uh, we really need uh, for instance Tagalog English or maybe uh, Hindi uh, English uh, speakers right uh, sorry that uh, somebody else is now joining so uh, uh, uh.
Well, not anymore. Anymore, sorry. Uh, so right, uh, I go on. Uh, somebody was trying to enter, but uh, uh, he or she disappeared. So uh, I go on. But of course, uh, we can't provide a translation to every language in the world. So I made uh, some evaluation uh, to see which languages uh, uh, have the priority uh, to be used in such context. So I have three criteria. The first criteria is the population. Three points for those languages with more than 100 million speakers two points for languages between 10 and 100 million speakers, and one point for language with less than 10 million speakers. The second criteria, criterion is the social and solidarity economy activity. Three points uh, for those uh, language areas with a lot of solidarity economy activities, two points for such areas to, with uh, somewhat um, solid, where solidarity economy is somewhat active, and one point where solidarity economy isn't active at all, a very little active. And the third criterion is, of course, the monolingualism. Three points for those uh, places where most people don't speak uh, any of the replaced language. Two points where is professionals or public officials can understand uh, replaced languages. And one point where most people understand one of replaced languages. But of course, my evaluation is quite subjective. And the people from the very language areas may be uh, uh, opposed to my, you know, my subject, you know, my bias. But let's see. Uh, I gave, uh, so according to my presentation, you know, uh, evaluation, four languages uh, uh, got nine, uh, eight out of nine points. First of all, Chinese. Nobody can deny the importance of Chinese language in, in terms of the population and uh, the monolingualism that in Chinese speaking areas like mainland China, uh, Taiwan is. Mm, and so, you know, in Hong Kong, some people, you know, uh, quite a few people speak English, but uh, in, not in other part of Chinese speaking areas. And uh, as for social and solidarity economy activities, I'm still not too familiar with uh, mainland China, but I'm sure there are some activities in Hong Kong and Taiwan. So I put eight points. The second, impo another important language is Indonesian. Uh, and uh, you, uh, you know that Indonesia is quite similar to Malaysian. So uh, by providing uh, uh, information in Indonesia, we can cover as many as 300 million, almost 300 million people. And the picture is very similar in, in case of Indonesia. So I gave, I gave eight points. Actually, uh, many Malays, uh, Malaysian speakers are fluent in English, but uh, not, it's not the case of Indonesia. So I put eight points. Also, uh, the picture is similar also in case of Japanese. And in case of Korea, uh, you know, the population, uh, uh, there are, there's uh, a bit less population, but uh, at the same time, we know that uh, uh, the you know, uh, social and solidarity economy is very, very uh, active, and the national, you know, uh, the uh, practices are very well uh, networked. So I put uh, eight points. Let's see if somebody is uh, trying to join. Well, not the case. So I go on my uh, presentation. And uh, there are other language with, with seven points. First of all, Arabic. There, you know, the, you know, Arabic is spoken in more than twenty countries, and so the population is huge. And we have we uh, already uh, de detected a lot, uh, lots of social and solidarity economy activities. But in terms of monolingualism, uh, it's I put uh, two points because in many countries, if not uh, all, uh, people are quite fluent in English or French. So we uh, and uh, they tend to. Uh, write a report in English or French in some occasions, but in other countries, it's not that it's not the case. So I put seven points. Another case is Italian, but of course, Italian is very, quite similar to Spanish or French. And uh, so I put seven points. 
Khmer could be another important language, although our contact with uh, Cambodia is still limited. Persian can be also, also important language because it's spoken not only in uh, Iran, or formerly known as Persia, but also in uh, Afghanistan and uh, Tajikistan, Tajikistan, where you know, a similar language is spoken. Uh, I, I don't know if my evaluation is correct in terms of the social and solidarity economy activity. We, I've really, we've uh, really got to speak with uh, people from Iran, Afghanistan, or uh, Tajikistan, but I suppose seven points is uh, a good evaluation. Portuguese, uh, well, I'm really not sure if Portuguese should be included or not because it's very, very si quite similar to Spanish, but on the other hand, we know that uh, Portuguese countries, Portuguese speaking countries, especially Brazil, can't be ignored. So, mm, so I put the Portuguese at the bell. Another language, important language, of course, Russian, which is still widely spoken in former uh, Soviet Union countries. Not, so not only in Russia, but also in Ukraine, Belarus, uh, uh, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and so on. And uh, their monolingualism is uh, quite extended. That means very few uh, people from such countries are fluent in English and forget about French or Spanish. But we, uh, or, on the other hand, it's also true that we can't uh, detect social and solidarity economy activities, especially because they are former communist countries and they tend to uh, hate, so you know, kind of, you know, uh, cooperativity and that kind of socialist economies. So I put seven points. Another important language is of course Thai, which is also widely understood in Laos. And this, and I know that there, uh, not many Thai are fluent in English. So I suppose this uh, uh, evaluation is appropriate. And also we can say the same uh, for Turkish language. And here, uh, just to give uh, some uh, example, I put some uh, languages. Uh, in the social and solidarity economy field, uh, traditionally, uh, ba uh, Basque speakers and Catalan speakers tend to be very, very active. But at the same time, we know that every Basque or Catalan speaks fl um, fluently in Spanish if, ne um, if necessary. Or when they travel to, for instance, Madrid or Mexico City, uh, they uh, they can pre uh, uh, they can get along perfectly in Spanish, so I give less priority to such languages. Uh, I'm uh, Charles. I'm not sure about the case of Tagalog. I know the population in the Philippines is quite uh, huge, so I put uh, three points, and so uh, there should be a lot of cooperative movement in the Philippines. So I put two uh, points, but. As for monolingualism, I put one point because uh, people know uh, that uh, Filipinos tend to be quite full and in, uh, uh, oops. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. I'll, okay. Uh, okay, yeah. I thought somebody was entering, but actually you were uh, leaving comments. So, uh, so I I give back to my presentation. What is what? You know, okay. Okay. Anyway, uh, and Vietnamese can be another uh, can, uh, important language, but with six points. So let's see. Uh, so uh, in case we could provide uh, information in all the language with eight or seven points, you can see that the world would, will be very different. So on, uh, on, on, on the left, you see uh, a lot of countries which are uh, left in gray. gray. But in, on the right, map uh, on the right uh, you can see that uh, quite a few countries are right now in green which uh, means that these countries are covered by the, uh, the you know, hypothetical uh, multilingual uh, policies covered by uh, covered by repairs so I'm not saying that uh, every country is now covered but most countries will be covered by this policy and this will be 
so this will change completely the picture. And uh, so uh, other, uh, uh, other important uh, languages to be mentioned, uh, like uh, Amharic, which maybe you, you don't even know that there's a language called, called Amharic, but it's the official language of Ethiopia with, where more than 100 million people live. Uh, uh, Serbian and or Croatian is also important in the for, uh, former Yugoslavia. So which nowadays uh, Serbia, Montenegro, uh, Croatia, Bosnia Herzegovina, uh, and you know, Serbian is written in Kiel alphabet, like Russian, while Croatian is written in Latin alphabet, like in English. But they are practically practically the same language, and uh, these uh, languages are still used in such areas. Burmese or Bengali, Hindi, Urdu, uh, Tagalog can be important, but this is a topic we can discuss with people, especially from uh, such areas. But of course, it's true that we can't provide every information in all, the, all those languages. So uh, my suggestion would be that uh, most contents in at Repress and other Solidarity Economy websites sh should be kept only in English, French, and Spanish. But uh, I'd like to apply the law, you know, the, the a law of parade. That means twenty percent of information can cover eighty percent. 20% of information in quantity can uh, cover 80% of information in quality. So, uh, the, for instance, about uh, repairs, about social and solidarity economy, uh, charter of principles, and the quarterly newsletters can, uh, would, um, can be uh, translated in more languages. So, uh, people in, in gray, sorry, a green country can be. Uh, can, uh, can be attended. And uh, perhaps uh, we can uh, talk with uh, national networks in such a uh, great country, sorry, green country, so uh, about uh, if um, they can provide such kind of uh, services. And I, and of course, uh, providing such a service can uh, cost, uh, cost um, a lot of money. So uh, first of all, I propose the, uh, the uh, uh, editing of a uh, short pamphlet, uh, small pamphlet, like uh, re a Solidarity Economy in a nutshell, in let's say uh, 15 languages. In this case, for each language we need like, uh, well, uh, some 300 uh, dollars, US dollars, uh, Per language, so I just say we need a bit less than three, sorry, five thousand uh, U.S. dollars to uh, prepare such a pamphlet in fifteen languages. And uh, as for quarterly newsletter, maybe we need like uh, four hundred uh, dollars per language for translation. And if we want uh, fifteen, and that in fifteen language, we need like six. Uh, $6,000 per season. That means 24,000 uh, US dollars uh, per year. And also uh, we need a language manager. And for that person, I suppose we need to pay like uh, between 20 to 30 US dollars per year. But of course this uh, translation cost can be reduced. So for instance, if Koreans uh, have a solid national network and the national network, can uh, assume the uh, uh, take uh, all the translation text, we can reduce the translation cost for the translation in Korea and so on. And another project that I'd like to propose uh, for June is a webinar, Introduction to Transformative Economies. That means, mm, you know, uh, we are plan we were planning to organize that uh, World Social Forum of Transforming uh, Economies at the end of June in Barcelona, but of course it was canceled because of COVID-19. So we had to go uh, online, and uh, instead of having a physical meeting in Barcelona, 
where only those uh, where only those who can who could travel there could attend. We'll organ uh, we'll organize a webinar so everybody can attend as far as they have good internet connection. And my, but uh, we, I have to admit that uh, many people still don't understand the very concept of transformative economies simply because there's no information written in, for instance, in Chinese, Thai, and so on about this concept. So my suggestion is to uh, uh, give this kind of uh, uh, introduction webinar. Uh, with translation in such languages so ordinary people can understand the topic. And so my idea is to organize such webinars in many, many languages like uh, Korean, Japanese. I don't know if you know, doing it in Tagalog is also important or not, but uh, maybe also in, in Indonesian, uh, Thai, uh, Vietnamese, perhaps Hindi, Russian, and so on. And another important reason why we need national networks is specifically for this chat, this graph. This graph is about the this about the statistics of social economy in Korea. But of course, unless you are fluent in Korea, you can't understand what it means. And the, tradi uh, the traditional uh, trilingual policy has been turning down such kind of information available in. Korean, Chinese, Japanese, Indonesian, and so on, simply because such information isn't available in English. And uh, we and we can't, uh, we, I, I suppose we can't tolerate this kind of you know, discriminatory uh, policies anymore. So we have to uh, come up with some mechanism. So such kind of uh, important uh, information, at least a summary of such information uh, can be, shared in uh, uh, other languages. And uh, another important uh, topic uh, is to set up the la uh, language group. That means to set up a group of, uh, you know, uh, linguists who can translate between, for instance, uh, Japanese and English, or Korean and English, or maybe, for, uh, maybe, uh, Indonesian and Portuguese, which which can be done with the help of East people from East Timor. So the task, uh, this uh, task force will work on uh, translating uh, international communication and uh, like a refresh newsletter into the target net language, but also it would be ideal to set up a, a portal website. Actually, Koreans have their uh, uh, good uh, website called Laughing, and uh, last week I started to write for the uh, uh, portal website uh, about solid social and solidarity economy in Spain. But it would be ideal if a uh, similar web, uh, website could be opened in uh, Indonesian or uh, Thai or Chinese and so on. And also, you know, uh, it's important to have all, uh, regular web webinars about different topics of social and solidarity economy available in such Asian languages. So thank you very much for your attendance. And uh, right now uh, I open the debate, so uh, so I'm open to your questions, comments. Who wants, uh, please. Do you have some, uh, don't you have some comments or questions? Please turn on your microphone. Uh, I know that you, uh, if you want, you, know, you can speak in Japanese and uh, later I, I can translate it for Charis. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your hard work. Um, there, are, there are no special questions about today's presentation and I will continue to uh, cooperate in your work. Thank you. Arigatou gozaimashita. Thank you. Kamsahamunida. So, Charis uh, Asumir, uh, do you have some comments or questions? Um, for now, um, I think yeah. the project.
Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, can you? Yeah, we yeah, can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for now, uh, I think um, <clears throat> the project is really nice. <clears throat> it's really nice. It's, um, there will be some, um, if we can uh, invite more linguist, linguists for this project and be able to um, uh, introduce to them the SSE. I think this will be a great uh, project and more people can can participate in SSE, in their, especially in their native language. But as for in the Philippines, you know, uh, we are more comfortable with English language, so it's not a problem with us for now. Yeah. But um, just a, um, a comment about the presentation, the official language of Philippines is Filipino. But although the president, the Duterte, is speaking more of English and uh, his native language, Bisaya, you can see that there, um, Filipinos are more into English than Filipino. So that's just my comment. Thank you for your presentation. Well, uh, I know that the uh, picture is, uh, differs a lot from one country to another, with, even within Asia. And uh, we know that uh, Filipinos tend to uh, be um, very pro-English language. But this, uh, and... Uh, yeah. Yeah, and... Uh, but the thing is that, you know, uh, I mean, and I, I'm in touch with solidarity economy activists in other continents, and uh, especially when you go to Latin America, people really defend the use of Spanish because, uh, because you know, uh, Spanish is a language which is uh, used in people's daily life. That means uh, when you go to Mexico or uh, Colombia, you see people doing businesses, uh, learn, you know. Uh, uh, attending webinars and so on in Spanish, and uh, they speak Spanish even at home. Yeah. For m most Latin Americans nowadays, Spanish is uh, Spanish or Portuguese in case of Brazil is the uh, first language. And uh, and uh, uh, solidarity economy uh, 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 as a promoter and uh, of solidarity economy, we have to. And you know, we take the uh, attitude that uh, the solidarity economy is for ordinary people. So first of all, you, uh, if you want to promote this topic in a particular country or particular area, you have to go there and to see which language is spoken you know, uh, in their daily life. So, and, uh, so in case of uh, applying this criteria, uh, these criteria into the con uh, Filipino context, I'm really not sure. Uh, on one hand, Filipinos are fluent in English. Uh, some Filipinos are fluent in English, but on the other hand, some people, especially especially in the rural area, aren't uh, quite fluent in English, or sometimes even in Filipino or Tagalog. So yeah, that, yeah. Um, and uh, when you go to other countries like Thailand or Vietnam, not, most people aren't fluent at all in English. So, and. Uh, Solidarity economy are rather uh, practiced by those people who aren't fluent in, in, in English. And so that is why I've been defending the, the multilingual approach, but unfortunately it hasn't been a common, you know, there has to be a consensus among Asian promoters. It, it's, uh, it's simply because uh, th they are rather from in, uh, those kind of English speaking countries, they were educated in English. They think English should be the sole language to be uh, done for academic or business field. So they don't they don't recognize the importance of other Asian languages if we they want to promote solidarity economy in other countries. This that's why I'm and uh, another point is that. Uh, people from other continents like Europe or Africa or Latin America tend to ignore the uh, reality of uh, Asia. So for instance, in April, I organized the first uh, presentation on uh, solidarity economy in Indonesia for Latin Americans. 
and I began with asking uh, Latin Americans what they know about Indonesia. And practically, they didn't know anything about Indonesia. You know, Indonesia is the largest country with 260 million pe population. In, in, but nobody from Mexico, or Argentina, Colombia knows about uh, Indonesia. So they naively assume that um, quite a few Asians are fluent in English. And of course, when uh, usually they receive such kind of Asian delegations at international conferences, which take place in Europe or Latin America. And those who can afford to travel internationally, into, sorry, intercontinentally, tend to speak English. But it doesn't mean that the most, uh, for instance, Thai or uh, Indonesians are fluent in English. And uh, we really need to focus on this uh, reality that most Asians aren't fluent in uh, English and that we really need to uh, share uh, basic information in such language. And of course, the um, typical op no, uh, opposition that I've heard is that uh, we don't have such money. Uh, but, uh, you know, I made this calculation and so, I suppose the cost will be like, uh, let's say, fifty thousand uh, uh, dollar per year. Of course, it's not a small amount of money, but at the same time, it's not too too much. If you uh, so, you know, if you have a uh, and uh, such kind of solidarity economy networks tend to have some employees. So, hmm. and so my op uh, opinion you know, is that maybe we can negotiate with such networks to ask them to pay more uh, contributions. So for instance, each national network will pay more like you know, maybe 1,000 or 2,000 dollars more per year. Then we have uh, enough amount of budget to cover such kind of uh, you know, uh, multilingual services. And right now, uh, also it's true that we right now, uh, we have uh, online uh, translation services like Google Translate or DeepL, uh, which provides affordable translations. Of course, uh, we still need to uh, uh, correct. We, we need, uh, we, uh, we need a proof, proofreading process, but it will at least reduce our efforts, uh, uh, our uh, workload, let's say. So what I mean is that you leverage all those resources available. Uh, it's not impossible to provide more information and to uh, enable uh, communication between uh, re uh, those who do speak repeat languages and those who don't speak any of repeat languages. It's rather a political than economic decision. That is, that is what I mean. And so, uh, fortunate, unfortunately, Sumire has already left. So, I don't know if you want to add some more comments, co uh, questions. Um, uh, because it it is Sunday evening, mm -hmm. so. Um, uh, it is difficult for everyone to participate, I think. I think uh, more people are interested in this topic uh, than those who pa participated today. Yeah. The reason I decided to do this presentation right now is because you know, it's a part of the on a, 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 a viral open space project, which is taking place this weekend. And uh, I was asked to do this at the late 11th hour. So, so I had to choose this, you know, uh, this time zone, but uh, at least uh, we have uh, the, I, uh, I've created a web, you know, uh, Facebook page called Language, uh, Language, uh, in the social and the solidarity economy, and uh, perhaps, uh, and uh, I'm thinking about repeating uh, this presentation maybe in the early in uh, in early June, so more people can join. And what's important is uh, to go on recruiting uh, people uh, who are willing to provide some translation services 
between English and uh, their own native language, if possible, between their own native language and uh, French or Spanish. So, uh, so anyway, anyway, uh, and another important point is that at least I'm recording this uh, video. So, uh, as always, I upload this video uh, after I finish it, so more people can watch it. And also, uh, another point is that if you really want, I can. <coughs> Sorry. I can organize. A, a, I can repeat this presentation for the Korean public. If no, if you can no, talk with the other Koreans, uh, do you think uh, can you uh, do you think you can organize another webinar in Korean? Mm. Yes, I can. Well, it's not. Uh, uh, you, you can talk with other Koreans who have uh, more networks and maybe, you know, we can ask for some uh, important social economy entity in Korea. And mm -hmm. we can do it as a webinar by such uh, organization. It's no, we tend to have more uh, people. If no, uh, such a webinar is organized by, for instance, the uh, Korean Solidarity Economy, and so, no, well, uh, cooperatives, social, uh, so economic, social. Well, I I don't remember exactly the name, but you know, you, Korea had that uh, solidarity con uh, congress, right? Uh, Which is the national network. So, uh, exactly. So, yes. yeah, in English, it uh, I uh, call it you know, solidarity congress. Mm, but uh, yeah, so, uh, maybe you not know, as an event by Co Solidarity Congress, or maybe as an online event by uh, LifeWin, that you know, mm -hmm. portal website, we can organize uh, my webinar about this specific topic or uh, on other topics. And uh, it will be very interesting you know, to go on sharing you know, such kind of knowledge from other countries to Korea. And of course, I'm um, planning to organize a similar uh, webinar, but uh, for a lot of for people from other countries to learn from Korea as well. Thank you. Uh, I think you, your efforts are, are quite encouraging. Thank you. Thank you. Come up, Sunida. So, Charis, uh, do you have some more comments, questions? Mm, I don't know. No. But thank you for the presentation. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, you know, so uh, another uh, important approach is to you know uh, to give this presentation at uh, repes uh, to make uh, re people realize that providing uh, some information in asian language uh, asian and sometimes european languages uh, doesn't cost too much what i mean is that uh, in, uh, as i told you know, 50000 dollars per year uh, isn't too much money if there's a political will uh, within the international uh, networks. And so let's see, you know, and what I, what's important is that, you know, there's a kind, you know, this topic is, we have to understand that's following. People don't speak about the linguistic diversity because those, those uh, don't speak uh, repeat languages can, cannot attend request meetings. Therefore, if if they don't attend the meeting, they can't you know, demand such kind of linguistic diversity. So those uh, who are fluent in English, French, or Spanish ignore such uh, the reality. And that's why I'm trying uh, I'm trying to uh, underscore, you no, know, uh, highlight the the uh, what the what is really happening. In, in other part of the uh, of the world, to make people realize that this is another reality. And uh, so, on next week, uh, in uh, in the first week of uh, June, I'll 
do this presentation as well in Japanese. Hopefully I can do it in other languages like Korean, Indonesia, Thai, or Vietnamese, perhaps French. And uh, uh, let's go, let's see, you know, if we can really you know, involve more people with this movement. So now I finish. Uh,